Assalamu alaikum everyone. I wanted to make a video on clarifying some of the things, answering some of the questions that you've been asking me and also responding to some comments. So I've got the video open and I'm gonna read the comments and try to respond to them. There are, you know, a few key topics that I am quite interested in covering, you know, things like, oh, why are you telling people to stop studying Arabic? Or, oh, how you have to learn with a scholar. This is not the correct way of learning. Or, oh, you're never going to really understand the Quran if you just rely on translation. And first of all, I'd just like to say thank you so much for the overwhelmingly positive feedback that we've got. And it just goes on to show that there's such a drive in people, such a hunger for uh, understanding the Quran and to be able to do that quickly and easily. So jazakallah khair for all the positive comments. As to the negative comments, I think there's been mostly two types. There's been very constructive feedback, discussing things in a respectful way and learning from each other. And obviously there were very disrespectful and harsh comments where people were like, oh, what you're saying is haram and you should remove all these videos and you're gonna, uh, you know, you could go to hell for this and whatnot. And, so obviously those comments were just deleted and those people blocked because, you know, honestly, if you can't even speak to your sister in Islam respectfully, then I frankly don't think you have the right to give me a lecture on who understands the Quran and who doesn't. You know, please spare this community the negativity and just go and watch a different video. There's a lot of comments in the topic of O, oh, why are you telling people to stop learning Arabic? And how are you ever gonna understand the tafsir or the hadith if you don't learn Arabic? You can't really truly understand the meaning, you'll never be able to get the depth of the Quran. First things first, right? Of course, the language of the Quran is Arabic. To understand the Quran, you will need to know that Arabic that's in the Quran. Um, but we really have to think about what we're focusing on here. So for example, people are saying, oh, if you never learn Arabic, you will never understand the tafsir and the hadith, etc. And of course that's true, we won't be able to read those books, but we have to think about what our aim is and our focus is. I never said this is a cha channel where you'll be able to understand the tafsir and hadith afterwards. Our whole channel is focused on the Quran and Quranic Arabic. So yeah, so there's a, a difference. One of the commentators put it best and they were like, you know, I think people are really misunderstanding the title. It's not like you're saying, oh, don't learn Arabic at all or we're not going to be learning Ar any Arabic. It's that we are just focusing on the Quran, we're starting with the Quran, it's baby steps to the Quran. Another commentator said, you know, I'd rather start and, and make some progress and take some baby steps towards understanding the Quran rather than having to do all of Arabic before I can even begin to understand the Quran. Someone said, learn Arabic, reading everything in English will only get you so far and not the depth of the Quran. So yeah, we are learning Arabic, but we're not studying Arabic. You know, it sounds paradoxical, but we're not sitting down and studying an Arabic course. We are studying the Quran and we're learning Arabic as part of the process. We're not learning Arabic before we start the Quranic process. We are not learning Arabic with an aim to understand the Quran in the future. We actually want to start now. So we're actually focused on the Quran. And, you know, that's how it should be, in my opinion. Why don't we prioritize the Quran? Why don't we start with the Quran rather than starting with prerequisites? Because the Quran will teach us Arabic, you know? So the, the, the Arabic that we do need to know, the Quran will teach us that. And that's exactly what we're doing. So another comment, and again, these are quite repetitive, the, the theme of it. So apologies if, you know, I'm going on too long, laboring the same point, but it's because you've missed it. Like, oh, I was really shocked that you're motivating people to stop learning the Arabic language, whereas God says in the Quran that Quran is an Arabic book. So again, you haven't really watched the video. I'm not telling people to stop studying Arabic. You know, one of my own students does study Arabic uh, alongside, and I've never told her to stop. What I was saying to people was that, you know, AI meant the Arabic that people learn, um, you know, modern Arabic and modern Arabic books. That really doesn't help you understand the Quran at all. The second thing was that you can stop learning Arabic in general as a language if you want to focus on the Quran, even if you want to later learn tafsir and hadith or become a scholar, all those things, yes, you will need to study Arabic in depth. This brother did say, oh, typical viewers commenting before processing the entire message, sister is saying to learn Arabic according to the context of the Quran. That's exactly what, you know, that is. 
brother Asad said, so this is one of the top comments and I, you know, he respectfully wrote a long comment and I left this on because even if it's criticizing the process, it's very respectful. He said that reading the translation will never give a complete meaning. Yes, you might get a gist, but never a complete meaning. And that, you know, there's an obligation on learning Arabic, etc. Where Ibn Taymiyyah said that Arabic is from the religion and knowing this language is obligatory because understanding the Quran and Sunnah is obligatory and it's not understood without this language. And he recommended a Medina Arabic book, which if I do remember, I did try uh, once upon a time, but again, I found that it, it was too much and it was, it was still too general and not focused on the Quran. Of course, the Quran is a really deep book. Of course, it takes years to study. Of course, no one can ever really say, oh, I now understand the Quran completely. None of the scholars have even said that in the past, but that doesn't mean that you can't begin somewhere. So I like to think of it as a funnel. We are starting with the top of the funnel. It's like a very broad, general understanding. And then with time, we want to go deeper into the funnel and go deeper into the Quran and you start understanding more and more uh, with time. But what people do nowadays is instead of having the funnel and starting broad and then going deep, what they do is they spend a really long time studying the basics and the theory and the application of it, which we wanted to start with, which is that we wanted to understand the Quran, that comes after months and years. And that's what was different in this course, was that from day one, we were starting to understand the Quran. I personally didn't want to spend even a minute learning, you know, theory and, um, you know, rules if I wasn't seeing how I'm going to apply it when I actually open up the Quran. This approach of this channel, the reason why it's so different is because of course we are still learning the rules and we are still learning some grammar but we're learning it as we go along so we're looking at we're reading a verse and then we're saying okay which rule is actually being applied here uh what words are actually being used here and what can we learn from that verse right and so this is extremely different and this is what it's like a, it's like a applied knowledge course rather than a theory course okay so the other thing people have said is that oh you are only learning through translation, therefore you will not understand the depth of a word if you just use translation. So to me that's quite paradoxical because every sort of language learning relies on translation. Even if you think about your first language that you learned as a baby. And it's like you learn through translating what you already know and making associations with the word. So for example, when a baby sees this, the sky and it might say, oh, okay, that's, it might learn that that's blue. And then uh, he or she goes to see something else that's blue, but a darker shade of blue. And then they say, okay, that's also blue. And then they find another shade of blue. And then eventually as they make more and more associations, the meaning of blue in their head becomes so rich. And next time they are able to understand the real depth of that meaning and, and associate blue with that. And also they might go on to say, okay, blue can sometimes be used contextually as sad and blue, meaning, you know, you're like a feeling, feeling blue as well. So then that word blue keeps building a lot of richness into their vocabulary. And so they can now use that word in different contexts, but they had to start with translation. And for people to say, no, if you are learning through translation, you're not really learning the language, but if you then go and study Arabic, you will understand the depth more, but you will also be trying, you will have to start with translation, honestly, even when you're doing an Arabic course, it's that's how all the languages are learned anyway. So some people are saying, oh, you'll never really be able to understand the depth of a, a verse or the real meaning, or it won't be able to hit you or impact you the same way if you're just doing this process where you're going solely by translation. So actually that's not true because I feel that Alhamdulillah, after doing this process and learning like this, I do understand the richness and the depth 
And the reason is because we're not going through one translation. What I used to do was go through multiple translations, look at how different people and different translators are actually translating this verse. And I did used to listen to some tafsir as well alongside and the sheikh would sometimes go in more detail about the meaning of a word and stuff. And it's obviously a constant journey. But to say that if you learn this way, you'll never really be under you'll never be able to understand the depth. That's just wrong because you know, just like that baby, for example, the, the word blue ends up meaning so much to them. In a similar way, when you read different translations, you say, oh, okay, for example, we just did today, bi'idhnillah. So bi'idhnillah was translated as by the will of God, by the permission of God, by God's leave, you know, so you add up, uh, you, your brain automatically picks up all these things and puts them in a chunk and relates that word to all these meanings. You know, there's never a one-to-one -one uh, translation of any word in any language this word means this word completely you know it, it, there's always going to be subtle differences and you can still pick that up so rest assured you know that is the whole point of doing this process is that so we understand more than just the translation we are going a step above and that's what most people want can't negate the importance of grammar and morphology for some ayat you really need a higher level of arabic to understand especially if it entails fiqh or uh, aqidah. Of course, yes, but I would like to add one thing here, is that it's not a given that once you understand and you study Arabic, that you can then go on and understand exactly why uh, Allah said this or the verse was written like this. You will still need to study that aspect in detail with scholars. So again, it's not the study of the Arabic language per se that's going to get you there. You will still have to learn from scholars. You will still have to learn actual tafsir. And Arabic is just a tool to understand the tafsir and to understand what the scholars have said. Just knowing Arabic is not going to magically give you the ability to suddenly understand all the Quran and its depth and its tafsir and all of those things. No, you will still need to study those separately. And, and that's my point, is that, of course, that can come next. That's also not to say that you can't supplement your um, learning by tafsir in English right now, because a lot of tafsirs and a lot of lectures, they actually take an Arabic word and they explain to you the context in, in much more detail uh, in English. Um, but then that gets imprinted into your brain. And when you see that word in Arabic in the Quran next time, you'll be able to remember all that explanation. So even if you haven't heard the explanation or even if you haven't read the tafsir in Arabic, you can still get a deeper meaning, right? So it's just to make things easier for ourselves. Desiree, thank you for your comment. She, uh, she or he says, uh, as a revert, I completely understand where you're coming from. I think some people are just misunderstanding your approach. You're just simplifying this for those of us who don't know Arabic at all. I'm happy I found your channel and looking forward to learning how to read the Quran. Then when I have more time, I can learn Arabic. So. I think in closing, uh, I'd just like to say one thing, and that is, you know, we love to be optimistic and we should have big goals, but, you know, as Muslims, we also really need to be realistic. You know, not all of us will actually be, become scholars. Not all of us will dedicate years of our lives studying Arabic. Is that uh, optimal and ideal? And would that be great if everyone could do that? Yeah, of course, you know, absolutely. And there's a lot of reward in studying and gaining knowledge, what we really need to focus on and what we really need to prioritize is the Quran. And the quicker you can do that, the better, because every day you want to be reading it, you want to be, you know, reflecting on it and you want it to impact you, you want to feel the beauty. So when you look at other people and that are being impacted by the Quran and you see that they've studied Arabic for years and years, then it's very easy to become so discouraged, you know? And the point of this, course is so that we can encourage people to start somewhere and to show that you actually don't have to spend that many years to start to begin to appreciate the Quran and of course the journey is a lifelong one you can continue to do that you can continue to go deeper the Quran is just so deep it's like an ocean there's just no end to the layers that you can unpeel and the things that you can learn you know every time you open the Quran you will learn something new. And so, you know, it, the thing is, the, the way Arabic language and the way understanding the Quran is presented these days, it's presented so tediously and it's presented like it will take you ages to even 
begin or you know to understand anything and that's why i made this course because hey it doesn't take years it actually took me uh, less than a year so i started after ramadan and it was by next ramadan i was like oh my goodness what is happening when the quran is being recited i'm i'm you know understanding the the verses and then of course when i had gone into more detail in tafsir with some verses i could understand even more so it, it was incredible you know and i want other people to feel that i want other people by by next ramadan the way you feel when you listen to the quran in uh, taraweeh prayer or just in general you know it's just different and you just feel different and and this can happen in in less than a year and you can do this until next ramadan you know that's how easy and quick this approach is because it's so focused it is just so focused so yeah i guess that's really the message for today you know begin with the quran focus and prioritize on the quran you really cannot go wrong with this may allah make it really easy for you and really quick and you know god does say that we made the quran easy to remember and you know easy to understand uh, so are there any that will remember or are there any that will understand so he has promised to make it easy so you know when people say oh it's so tedious it's so difficult it will take years no it won't you just have to prioritize the quran and and begin with the quran and the rest will come easy so with that i thank you and um see you in the next video assalamu alaikum